Is Zimbabwe ready for the first female state president? Is Zimbabweans ready to see the first female Zimbabwe defense uh, forces commander? Your guess is as good as mine. Are we ready as Zimbabweans to have the first female state president? If your answer is yes, if your answer is no, we have invited one of uh, the political players in the 2023 elections. We have said, I am ready to take Zimbabwe to the next stage. Are you ready to receive it? What is it that she has that can change the lives of ordinary Zimbabweans? Today we have invited Elizabeth Valerio to talk about her political life and the outfit that she leads. If you have any answers or questions that you need to know from her, she is in the studio. Elizabeth, welcome to Sly Media. Thank you very much for having me. Um, to Sam, you know, you know, from what we have heard, you know, mm -hmm. politics is a dirty game. And we have heard that so many women do not want to be involved into it. They would rather be, you know, just as voters than go home. But you have said, I want to go to State House. What's the motivation behind? Well, first of all, I, I think you're absolutely right. So many women shy away from politics. Mm -hmm. It's something we're working hard to change in mm -hmm. Zimbabwe. And it is because the, the view that people have is that politics is supposed to be this difficult, dirty mm -hmm. experience. But it's not supposed to be that way. Um, as a political a player as mm -hmm. they call it or yeah. as, a, as a leader of a political party mm -hmm. one of my main goals is to change the entire uh, dynamic within Zimbabwe mm -hmm. um, I really feel that the only way that you can change Zimbabwe the way you can impact all of the aspects of what we are experiencing as Zimbabweans mm -hmm. whether it's the lives we live the jobs that we seek mm -hmm. you know all of the the various things that affect us from the educational perspective mm -hmm. All of those things are underpinned by policies that are established by government. Mm -hmm. The environmental factors, you know, the um, exploitation that we're going through as a country right now, mm -hmm. it's all underpinned by the policies. These mm -hmm. are our safeguards. The upholding of the constitution of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. These are all things that are supposed to be done by our government. Enforcement of law, mm -hmm. the protection of our citizens. So the reason I'm getting involved in politics is because I want to be seated at that table, helping to shape the future direction of our country. Mm -hmm. We can't do it as women unless we are sitting at the table. Mm -hmm. And historically, we've always been viewed as we should be in a supporting role. Mm -hmm. uh, people aren't really used to seeing women who step up and say, I'm ready to lead. Yeah. Uh, we want to change that. So I'm, I'd like to be a role model to other women in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So generally, how has been the support from whom? Um, family level because mm -hmm. one of the reasons that we have also heard is I as a woman my husband will say no stay at home don't do A B C D how has been your support from home and from yeah. the extended family members as well I I'm fortunate because I have a husband who really supports what I'd like to do he mm -hmm. Um, he wasn't happy about it, I'll be very <laughs> honest. <laughs> he said, I want to, yeah, I'm going to be president. I've been elected president of a political party. Yeah. And, um, mm. you know, the night I had to take that news to him, mm -hmm. he was very, um, he was dismayed. Yeah. Because, he, you know, everyone understands Zimbabwe is probably <laughs> the wrong place to be involved huh? in politics. Yeah. Um, but it's even more reason, mm. right? Uh, my husband has uh, supported all, all that I've done. I, you know, I'm, I'm a scientist, entrepreneur, yes. conservationist. Uh -huh. All the work I've done over the last, you know, two decades, he has mm -hmm. been there by my side supporting mm -hmm. it. This is a different journey. Um, I can't do it without his support, but also all of the, the members of my family, you know, they really understand mm -hmm. that once I make my mind up to do something, I, it's difficult to change. It. <laughs> <laughs> I like to achieve yeah. the goals that I set. And so yeah. as, a, as a leader of a political party, I now have a responsibility to the citizens of Zimbabwe. We've spent 20 months, 24 months actually, mm -hmm. um, visiting constituencies throughout this country, speaking with the citizens, hearing what their experiences are. You know, I've seen their faces, I've heard their, you mm -hmm. know, their wishes. I want to be 
you know, I want to honor the, the promises we are making to them hmm. to deliver a better Zimbabwe. 24 months on the road, 24 months away from home. Yes. How are you balancing the two now? You know, being a mother, a wife, and mm. the leader of a political party. It's, um, you have to be organized. Mm. Yeah, I've got a strong team around me yeah. um, that really supports the balance. Mm -hmm. My husband and I make time to be with each other when we can. <laughs> <laughs> I've kept him away from politics because okay. it's not something he signed up for. You know, I, I'm yeah. trying to ensure that he still has his privacy and his life. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, I do make time for, for myself. I mm -hmm. believe if you don't look after yourself, mm -hmm. you can't really serve others. Um, so I, I, I come from a, a space that's beautiful. I, I live in Wange, mm -hmm. in, a, in a tourism space. I, I wake up to elephants, um, you know, calling in the morning. Yeah. Uh, at night we hear the lions roaring. So when I need a break, I, I do step away. Okay. Or I read a book or I do certain things to just try to mm -hmm. clear my mind. But the team that you have around you really makes the difference as well. <laughs> so how have you been received in the last 24 months? by the electorate. I know it might be very difficult, you know, uh, 40 years, you mm -hmm. know, people probably getting used to one or two political parties. Now this is a new political party that is being led by a woman as well. Yeah. How have you been received in the last 24 months? You know, at first it was difficult. People were surprised when they first met me because they didn't mm -hmm. really know who I was or, you know, what, what it was that I intended to bring to Zimbabwe as mm -hmm. a leader in mm -hmm. politics. Um, I think what we've done a lot of work on is trying to really invest in engaging the citizens, mm -hmm. having conversations in, we started actually in the rural constituencies, mostly okay. Kuma, Kumarua, you know, uh -huh. um, visiting uh, villages, uh, speaking to people, uh -huh. whether it's at their homes mm -hmm. or, you know, in, in community group gatherings. Uh, so we really invested time in, in yeah. ensuring that they had mm -hmm. an understanding of who we were, what our values were. Um, what the founding, you know, principles of this party are. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think now that individuals are starting to know me, because that's ultimately what it takes, right? There's always a mistrust. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, what is your real intention of getting involved in politics? Mm -hmm. What is it that you are looking for? Um, and in politics, we've been disappointed so much. And so many people are not trusting anymore of politicians. Yeah. Um, but I'm now very well received. <laughs> Honestly, it's, yeah. um, it's so heartwarming because everywhere I go, people are saying, I know you, Valerio. I'm following you, Valerio. Yeah. I support you, Valerio. I'm going to vote for you, okay. Valerio. So it's, it's, I feel like I'm being well received. And it, quite interesting uh, that you started in the rural areas. To some, we have heard that uh, there are no go areas for mm -hmm. opposition political parties. How has been the journey for you so far? There are no-go areas throughout, whether it's in the rural areas or in the urban areas. I mean, just last week we had an incident here in Harare where mm -hmm. our citizens were attacked and victimized. And so I think there are certain so-called no-go areas, but mm -hmm. the people in those areas don't want them to be no-go areas. Mm -hmm. They are still citizens that we have to engage within those areas. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know one of the first places we visited was um, Mash Central. Yeah. And in some of these rural constituencies in Mash Central, the citizens you know, was so bold, they gave me strength and confidence okay. because they said we cannot continue like this. They mm -hmm. didn't want Zimbabwe to continue in the way that it is. And some of these people, they'd been victimized years ago, maimed mm -hmm. years ago, and they still st stood up and said, we want a new Zimbabwe, we want a better Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. we need a new government. So I, I think, you know, it, it, we can't dis, you know, discriminate and say, certain places we will put our efforts. We want to make sure every citizen has the opportunity to participate, mm -hmm. whether it's as a voter or as an, a candidate. So we've got to go there. Mm -hmm. And uh, coming to the general elections mm -hmm. with the political party that you lead, obviously you are the candidate, uh, the presidential candidate uh, in the uh, upcoming general elections. Are we also going to see uh, members of parliament and local authorities contesting or you are just putting yourself as the sole candidate and then you take it from there. So one of the goals of UZA is to build a new government. Mm -hmm. We can't do that without having a full government. Mm -hmm. um, we have candidates throughout Zimbabwe, okay. um, m almost all constituencies. Wonderful. Of course, we have a lot of work to do. We are, yeah. we are trying to ensure that where we have MPs, we also have our um, councillors. Mm -hmm. uh, and also we've got to go through the vetting process. So yes. what we've been working through, we've got um, committees throughout Zimbabwe in every province, mm -hmm. and they are um, 
receiving the nominations, where we have more than two candidates who are going through the election mm -hmm. process. Um, we are going to be well represented. Already okay. we've got a large number. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, we, we, I do, I'm realistic and I'm a, a, you know, a very practical person, so certainly I know that a government typically is comprised of multiple parties. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to make sure that we are the majority in government after this election. Okay. Through the vetting process, what kind of leaders were you looking at? The caliber of person that can represent sure. a constituents, the caliber of, of a person who can represent a, a ward. What, what, what kind of uh, people that we're looking at? There are a few things. Um, so we require that each mm. candidate submit their CV. Yeah. We are looking at the capacity. Political CV um, or academic CV? <laughs> <laughs> a CV in general. Because yeah, okay. some of our candidates, like me, they're mm. first time into politics. <laughs> I, I was not in politics two years ago. Yeah. Um, so we, we aren't looking at their political experience. Okay. What we want to ensure, first of all, is are they from the constituency that they will represent? Mm -hmm. So with Uza, it's a little different. We, we will not impose leaders from other areas mm -hmm. in a constituency or in a ward. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure they truly stand for the citizens uh, that they are representing. Mm -hmm. uh, we also want to ensure that they have the capacity. You know, parliamentarians today are not doing what the work of parliament. Mm -hmm. um, they should be, uh, you know, legislators, right? They should be yeah. truly um, on that parliamentary floor yes. representing the citizens, hearing what the citizens want and coming and pre presenting that and arguing mm -hmm. for their constituents. So we are also working through, um, as we are vetting, do they have that capacity? Mm -hmm. Now in Zimbabwe, I think um, oftentimes, sometimes you are disadvantaged because women, for example, weren't given the same educational you know, opportunities mm -hmm. four decades ago, for example, or maybe 20 years ago. They're still, women are still struggling to establish themselves. Mm -hmm. So we don't necessarily disqualify a candidate because of education, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure they have the ability to articulate the issues, represent their citizens um, in their constituents. Criminal record, for example, is something we will not um, accept as a candidate. Um, and there are a few other vetting requirements that we have. Mm -hmm. Uh, now that uh, you are the leader of a political party, uh, it is being led by a female. Mm -hmm. One of the issues that we have had, you know, from uh, women mm -hmm. within uh, some uh, political parties is there is no 50-50 gender representation. Mm -hmm. Now that you have done your vetting process, mm -hmm. do we have 50-50 in terms of the members of parliament, uh, aspiring members of parliament and the councillors? I'm sad to say not yet. We are aiming for that and, uh -huh. and we're working really hard to achieve that. We require it. We would like to have um, an equal representation of women. Mm -hmm. We're struggling to get women to participate. Okay. You know, there's so many challenges uh, women perceive about politics and, and most uh -huh. of them are real. Um, so it's very difficult for us um, to convince women sometimes to step up mm -hmm. and to, to get them to participate, especially young women. We want to see youth participating as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not there yet, but we are working really hard. And as a woman president, I am also very committed to that process. What, what would be the reason why women are not interested in politics? You know, when you become a politician, mm -hmm. um, first of all, your life now is this <laughs> open book. People yeah. will... Mm -hmm. uh, look at every aspect of your life and try to, um, you know, undermine you. Spe mm -hmm. Specifically, if you are, um, it, you know, in a different political party from what those individuals are, um, I can tell you from my own experiences. You yeah. know, you you are attacked on social media. People make stories up about <laughs> you. Um, you know, there's also the safety factor. Yeah. You know, we've had women already in our party that have been, you know, victimized, attacked, brutalized. Um, we we are in politics in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And so that perception of the fear, I think, is what really prevents a lot of women. But you know, you also have to realize mm -hmm. women carry a big burden. We are also responsible for a lot of uh, duties in our households. Our husbands sometimes mm -hmm. don't want a woman to go forward. Mm -hmm. um, so there are many challenges that women face. Mm -hmm. uh, coming to your manifesto, what are the first three things that can convince me and the people that are watching right now and say, let me vote for her and the party she leads. Mm -hmm. I think with regards to Uza, we are, we are in the process right now of writing a manifesto that is based on feedback from the citizens. Mm. Um, and that manifesto is quite comprehensive. It, it covers a lot of aspects yeah. of our country. 
we have um, a political party which is very committed to unifying our country. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, we want to make sure every citizen has an equal opportunity to, to thrive. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure that there aren't certain parts of our country that get more benefits than others. Mm -hmm. um, we want to also make sure that, as I said, leadership represented in our party is from the places where the citizens are. So I would say, uh, first and foremost, we will make sure that uh, a lot of what encumbers our country, what limits people from being able to, to, to succeed, uh, those barriers should be removed. So, for example, in Zimbabwe, young people right now don't get access to jobs. Yeah. We want to make sure that uh, when they leave their educational programs, they have great opportunities to jobs. So therefore, industry has to be revived. We're very committed to uh, enhancing our economic mm -hmm. environment, making sure that the industrial sector is strong and vibrant. Um, Another aspect would be our um, adherence to the constitution mm -hmm. and ensuring that uh, such things as corruption will be dealt with. Mm -hmm. We need to put an end to corruption. Zimbabwe, I think in many ways, is not progressing because of the state in which we, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, our country is, is corrupt at all levels, you know. Uh, so we want to ensure that we open up, um, you know, a space that people can, <coughs> uh, you know, can can count on in terms of uh, being a non-corrupt environment. You think of individuals when they go to get a driver's license, as basic as a driver's license, or you want to go and get an ID or a passport. They, every place you go, yeah. uh, there are these challenges. So we want to, to do away with that. And then I think, uh, you know, first, uh, one of the biggest aspects is we've also got to work on uh, the separation of, you know, the judicial system mm -hmm. from the executive powers of government. So we've got to make sure that we have a free... Uh, society and one in which our judicial system is, um, you know, fully unbiased and, and is, is protecting the rights of the citizens. Mm -hmm. If we are to look at the two, the first the republic and the second one, the first, uh, which was led by uh, the former and the late uh, President Robert Mugabe, mm -hmm. and now uh, the second republic under President Emerson Mnangagwa, mm -hmm. which environment would we want to live in? Which one is better between the two, or which one is worse hmm. between the two? I, I don't know how to answer your question because I know when we were in the first republic, <laughs> everyone was wanting change. Yeah. We were crying for change. We wanted to see a different Zimbabwean, mm -hmm. and Zimbabweans felt very disappointed mm -hmm. because what we expected independence to bring to our country was not delivered. Yeah. You know, people are still struggling, commodities were not available, uh, your safety, your personal safety was not was not guaranteed um, so we saw a lot of um, disappointments uh, during the first republic the second republic we had great hope as well um, and i think everybody rallied behind this new government and the new president um, unfortunately promises have not been delivered as we speak most citizens the lives they're living is not normal um, we don't have access to basic things that are really should be human rights um, water the ability to ri drive on a road without these potholes that are killing people mm -hmm. every single day. Um, you know, the ability to uh, participate, um, you know, freely in an election. These are things that should be guaranteed by this government, this current government. Um, yet we are facing the same challenges we faced in the First Republic. So I don't want to live in either one of them. We need a very different Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And it's not what we've seen over the last 40 years. Okay. Um, there's a school of thought that for political parties to displace the ruling parties and pay off, they need to have a coalition. Are you ready, are you open for a coalition among uh, other pol uh, opposing political parties? Or even with ZANU-PF, you know? <laughs> Uh, we are not uh, open to a coalition with ZANU-PF, I will say that very yeah. plainly. Yeah. And we're not interested in any other platform ZANU-PF may create, such as POLAD. Okay. It's not something we are entertaining as a political party. Mm -hmm. I will say that we've been approached by a number of uh, political parties that are talking to us about uh, coalitions. We're even being approached by members of other political parties who are saying, my party is not viable, uh, you know, what options are there for us okay. to engage. Mm -hmm. um, already we've uh, formed um, 
a memorandum of understanding with a political party uh, where the, there was a woman president and she simply said, I want a woman to be president in Zimbabwe. I cannot deliver that. And so we formed a, a memorandum of understanding whereby they were absorbed into our party. Okay. Um, and this political party was ZPAP, ZPAP. Mm -hmm. All of their members are now part of our party. Um, their MPs are contesting as UZA members okay. um, and as UZA candidates. So yeah. it's the conversations are happening. Yeah. The challenge when you look at coalitions is that you are looking at trying to bring together different political parties that have different ideologies. Mm -hmm. And so trying to navigate that and figure it out, like how do you work together and ensure that after elections, you continue to be united. Mm -hmm. As UZA, one of our biggest missions is unity. We want to make sure we are uniting the citizens of Zimbabwe. In fact, our slogan mm -hmm. is, it started off with the idea of bringing together the two, at the time, known political parties. You know, okay. now there's a party mm -hmm. that is now incorporated in this hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we're saying we want to change the future of our country. This is the slogan of UZA, the symbol. Okay. Uh -huh. um, so we are saying to the parties that are approaching us, join UZA, become part of UZA, mm -hmm. embrace and adopt the values, the principles of what UZA is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, essentially, we can still achieve the same goal. Um, I've seen over the years because UZA wouldn't exist if there was another political party that was viable and unified. We've seen splinters within other political parties, and that's often because people want different things. As UZA, we want to make sure that we have the same view, the same uh, vision and mission for the future of Zimbabwe. Now that you've said you've been well received in the rural areas, one of the tools that has been used to look the electorate, particularly in the rural areas, mm -hmm. is the issue of giving them something, you know, mm. be it fertilizer, they come under different names, mm. something, something scheme, you know, yeah. input scheme, this input scheme, year by year, and every year we have seen farmers and the village, villagers being given something, mm. you know, do you think that's sustainable? Is, 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 is it being used, you know, is, is the environment conducive for them, you know, to make ends meet without that kind of a support or it is limited in such a way that you know let's just keep them at this level so that every time after every five or so mm. years we give them something so that it becomes like we are assisting them what is it that should be done you know for these people not to receive these inputs mm. year in year out it's sad when you go to the rural areas mm. and that's the expectation politicians are supposed to bring us something and there's this Munei, yeah. you know, perspective, <laughs> yeah. you yeah. know, and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's really sad because the mentality of Zimbabweans has been really lessened. We are brilliant people. You know, mm -hmm. I've traveled all over the world. You meet a Zimbabwean and that Zimbabwean is making an impact in another country. Yes. But you come to Zimbabwe, we've been reduced to <laughs> beggars, yeah. literally beggars. But I'm proud to say that the, the, the rural constituents are starting to realize <laughs> it's an insult to them yeah. to say, rice, and then you expect me to think that I'm going to survive for the next five years. Yeah. So we need to reach more citizens, help them to unlock that mentality of saying, what do I get today? Think about the future. Mm -hmm. Their votes really do count. Mm -hmm. They make a difference. And voting for the same political parties who have disappointed us all these years mm -hmm. um, doesn't make a difference. So what we are trying to do is bring a different nar narrative. We invest time in, in educating the mm -hmm. citizens. We are forming um, uh, initiatives that will uplift communities. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're building 30 companies. They're in incubation phase at the moment. Uh, but these are companies which will create opportunities for Zimbabweans in the long term, mm -hmm. not short term solutions. It takes time to build something which is viable and sustainable. Um, and we want Zimbabwean citizens to be part of that process. We also don't make false promises. We don't promise people or, or buy bribe, you know, buy um, votes by mm -hmm. giving people, you know, these short term um, pacifying uh, gratuities. We want to make sure that this, the citizens of Zimbabwe have their dignity. We want to restore that pride. Mm -hmm. Let's work together as communities to build our communities. And the sad thing, Robert, you know, is I look at how other people live in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. They don't have what we have as Zimbabweans. You know, we've got land. Yeah. We've mm -hmm. got, sometimes we even have cattle. A person in Europe doesn't have that. Yeah. And I look at these other countries and I always say they don't have what we have. We have wealth, resources yeah. that are just mind-boggling, mm -hmm. but those resources are being taken away from us. 
So Zimbabweans look at those resources. They should see that those are theirs mm -hmm. and take ownership of those by voting. Because ultimately the vote is the choice, right? It's the voice, it's the, it's the, um, it's, it's the path towards changing Zimbabwe. But I think also a lot of people in the rural areas, they've been led to believe that if they vote the opposite direction, mm. if they don't vote for a particular party, mm. somehow it will be found out that they haven't voted. Mm. Uh, they believe that if they've inscribed their name um, somewhere on a you know, voter's roll, that information somehow electronically tracks where they vote. Uh, so we're trying to also get them to understand well, a lot of these misconceptions are, are, are completely wrong. Yeah. Uh, but I am, I am proud because I see the determination now in the rural voters. They, they are saying we cannot, you know, we cannot go through five more years. <laughs> and I, I say we cannot afford to go through five more years. <laughs> you know, if you look at the level of exploitation happening in our country, it's not for us as Zimbabweans. I, I live in Wangi. <laughs> I'm not seeing any benefit going to the Zimbabweans at all. You look at almost any region where there is this massive exploitation of our natural resources and you don't see Zimbabweans' lives transforming. Mm -hmm. So let's change that. And the only way to change that is through this election. Mm -hmm. uh, coming to the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, Zach, its mandate is public knowledge. Are you happy with the way it operates? Not at all. I think Zach has to do a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, most of the, the voters that we've come across right now um, have hardly had any engagement with ZEC. Uh, they oftentimes also don't have the right or correct information about voting or where they can vote. Um, a lot of people wish to vote, they don't have IDs still. Um, I don't believe that we have uh, an electoral commission that is effective at mm -hmm. this point in time. Assuming that you have been elected as uh, the first female president come September, you know, 2023, and <laughs> it's on the inauguration day, what are the first three things that you promise me and other Zimbabweans that within the next 100 days, these are the things that we are going to do, or these are the things that I'm going to do as your leader and as the governing party? Now, Robert, if I answer that question, <laughs> I'm giving away everything we'll be, we'll be sharing next week. We actually are unveiling our manifesto. Okay. And um, I've been asked by our executives to not share too much at this point. I'm sorry to do that. No, that's fine. Only yeah. because we are unveiling a, a very viable. I, I believe that you know, politics is not a war. Yeah. It's a contest of ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I have a huge mandate as the next president of Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. and I will not be that person who simply speaks for the sake of speaking. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure whatever I'm saying, I will deliver upon. So the first 100 days is being looked at right now by a committee. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've had debates and we're deliberating on a lot of things. Um, but you will find that this government, the government we are creating, the United Zimbabwe Alliance, will be very different. Mm -hmm. I'm a committed individual as a president, and I expect everyone who's within our government to be equally committed uh, to delivering upon everything that will be in our manifesto. Mm -hmm. So I ask Zimbabwean citizens to um, really look at this document, which we'll be unveiling. I've already let the cat out of the bag here. Mm -hmm. um, it will be this month. We are definitely releasing and, and rolling out our manifesto, and it will explain every aspect of what we are doing. I, I think it's a well-researched document. It's it's based on, um, you know, it, it's coming from a genuine engagement of the citizens. Um, and, and, and ultimately, I have to honor what's, what's being promised in there. Okay. So what kind of government are we looking at? We have heard that the current and the previous ones are bloated. You know, a lot of ministers and deputy ministers, the governors, and, you know, at the end of the day, the DA duplicating the duties of one called the governor. The gov mm -hmm. What kind of a government, you know, are we looking at? Are we... How many ministers, how many? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I can't answer a lot of that yet. Yeah. Um, some of what we are going to do has to be based on the assessment that will be done as we enter government. Mm -hmm. We've got to go through a, a complete audit okay. of what exists today, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot that is even unknown to the citizens about the way our government functions. But I will say we will be an efficient government, a lean government. We do not need excess. We do, you know, you look at the, the budgets that are, are put forward uh, by our government. Oftentimes we're not able to even, you know, adhere to these budgets because our, our government is excessive. Um, I also, as a, as, a, as a presidential candidate, want to ensure that we are, um, you know, prioritizing resources for the development of our nation. Mm -hmm. um, so where we can 
you know, cut costs and, and uh, be more efficient in terms of our fiscal management, we will ensure we're doing that. <laughs> One thing that has not been addressed adequately, according to people from the southern region, is the issue of Gokura mm. Your government, how are you going to uh, assist, or how are, you, how are you going to deal with that situation, you know, mm -hmm. in order to correct the injustices that were done to mm. the people from the south? Yeah, Gokura is a very difficult and painful, um, you know, part of our past, and I think um, it's something that. I wouldn't be the one to address. Mm -hmm. It has to be addressed by the individuals that are affected by Gukura mm -hmm. I don't know um, that the approach that's being taken today uh, is the most practical and sensible. I don't even think that it makes sense right now to place the responsibility upon the traditional leaders. Mm -hmm. It really has to be at the core of it, the individuals that are affected. But I do have um, a complete commitment to ensuring that we right the wrongs that were done. Mm -hmm. um, I think that ultimately, uh, you know, the, the victims of Gokura Munde need to be, they need, they need some sort of um, a, a compensation for all that has been done. And I think there needs to be proper recognition for this dark part of our life, our mm -hmm. past. And as we go towards the elections, I know this is obviously, the campaigns are going to start uh, sooner or later. Uh, um, what is your message to the youth, you know, because we have seen quite a number of them being used uh, for political violence or any other means. Just as we come back, I would want you to talk about that, the, how the youths are being used as political tools. For now, let's just take a break. Big businesses do not advertise because they are big. They advertise because they want to reach potential new customers. Advertising helps you move your goods off the shelves. Brand visibility engraves your brand in the hearts and minds of your old and new customers. Sly Media TV has a package for everyone, big or small. It's called Everyone Can Stream. Corporate events, weddings, churches or funerals, we stream it all. We take your product and event to over 326,000 followers on Facebook and 96,000 subscribers on YouTube. We cross post to over six pages with a reach of over a million followers from as little as $100 per hour. We give you the desired global reach. Call today for a free quotation. 263-772-863-484 or 263-775-964-849 or 263-773-761-800 or email on Sly Media Streaming at gmail.com. Sly Media TV, building bridges. Thank you and welcome back to our final segment where we are talking to Elizabeth Valelio. As you've heard, she wants to take Zimbabwe forward. And as we took a break, we're talking about how best can Zimbabwean youth be used other than the political violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have such a heart for the youth in Zimbabwe because when you really look at the youth, uh, they've gone through so much, you know. Um, most of the youth, in many of the youth in Zimbabwe, their parents are now living outside the country yes. trying to make a living. They've been neglected. A lot of them uh, in Zimbabwe, I know we've got a large number of youth that are even orphaned. Mm -hmm. So they've not had, um, you know, what a typical youth should experience. You know, mm -hmm. when you think of your youth, you should be, it should be a time of exploration, yes. trying to discover what you want to do with your life. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead, our youth are forced into trying to, uh, you know, essentially hustle and, and make a living. And oftentimes they're exploited through politics. Uh, and it, it's really sad. Uh, I'm also seeing a lot of our youth now turning to drugs. They are being mm. given drugs to yes. try to change their, their way of living. Um, even if you are someone who starts off sincere the moment you're exposed to drugs, you can't even think clearly. Mm. Our youth should um, understand that they have such great potential. Mm. It's just that they're in the wrong environment yes. uh, and the only way that they can change that environment is by changing the government of Zimbabwe they have to vote for a new government uh, so these short-term in, in enticements you know uh, or to be you know to be to be shown role models who have these flashy lives that doesn't change your life mm -hmm. and it's sad because when I think back to the liberation struggle it was the young people the children yeah 
who were fighting for this country. <laughs> it was the children who took up weapons to protect this country mm -hmm. and to protect the right to have equality in our country. Mm -hmm. Now we see young people are being given um, you know, this mandate to attack the people who are trying to bring uh, a better future for them. So I, I just would appeal to the young people to think about what it is that you are trying to achieve and look at what it is that you are doing. Do your actions bring forward the type of future that you have? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I think there's a lot of misinformation which is circulated about what politics and what opposition parties are trying to do. But ultimately, our main objective as the United Zimbabwe Alliance is simply to create a better future, to make sure young people can stay in our own country, have jobs here, rather than having to look for opportunities outside of the country. We want them to have everything that a normal uh, young person growing up should have, whether it's an education in a good university, without worrying about your fees. Um, we've got young people today who are even turning to sex at a young age, young girls turning to sex, being exploited by politicians. It's not a normal way of life. It shouldn't be allowed. Um, so as a, as a political party, as, as UZA, our government will change all of that. But we need young people to step up and use their voice. Mm -hmm. the, the young people have the ability to literally to change government in Zimbabwe. All they have to do is vote, mm -hmm. register to vote and turn up to vote. Mm -hmm. And they could change the future of this country. Mm -hmm. And I, I would also just add that we want young people to be in positions of leadership. Okay. Um, I don't think young people um, understand that you know, their views actually contribute towards strengthening this country. Mm -hmm. If we can have more young people actually sitting at the table, sharing ideas for how we can build this country, we could become a much more innovative nation. Um, so, you know, we are working hard to engage them, uh, but I do hope that all the young people listening also are, you know, able to really think about how they can contribute towards building a different Zimbabwe. <laughs> are you happy as a political leader, and as an opposition political leader, that the current government the way they are fighting corruption? Uh, so we have, right, the, the, the mechanism, you know, um, these bodies that are supposed to be looking into mm -hmm. corruption, but we're not seeing the results of these formations, mm -hmm. right? So um, our constitution is very clear mm -hmm. about, um, you know, what is supposed to be done, but I don't believe that we are executing and carrying out uh, these corrective measures. Mm -hmm. I do believe that um, even our, you know, our various agencies, such as the police, um, they are not well equipped to do the job of trying to, um, you know, protect the rights of citizens when they are exploited, whether it's in a civic case or whether it's, um, you know, a situation where someone is being taken advantage of. Um, and so there's nowhere really to report. Uh, oftentimes, even if you go to uh, the commissions, uh, y you know, the follow-up is not being done. You're not being really given the, the proper channels for, for you to be able to address these issues. Sadly, I also think that now in Zimbabwe, uh, a lot of citizens think that corruption is the only way to be able to get anything done. Um, and you'll find that people are looking for the shortcuts because things are so difficult, whether it's in business and you're trying to work through all of the, the, the procedures of establishing yourself. Um, you run into these obstacles and people seem to think that it's easier to get through that. Um, I think within our government, um, we also have a lot of people who now their livelihood is from corruption. They are not being paid adequately. And so they look to corruption as a way to survive. Uh, so it's a complex issue, this issue of corruption. Mm -hmm. As UZA, we have zero tolerance for corruption, and we will correct this. Um, the first thing you have to also do is ensure that people have sustainable livelihoods, that mm -hmm. they have jobs that are good, well-paying, mm -hmm. um, so they're not tempted to fall into this path of corruption. Uh, but where people are corrupt, we need to address it and address it publicly so that there are um, you know, examples made of individuals who are corrupt. Mm -hmm. What's your take-home message to the women that are watching you right now who are still deciding mm. either to join politics or to vote or not to vote? Mm. They are watching you right now as the leader of a political party. Mm. What is the message that you can share with the woman that is watching you right now? Sure. No, I, I think women, uh, we underestimate ourselves. We don't um, really understand the, 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 the value that we bring. Uh, whether it's at a domestic level, um, at a community level, even at a national level. So my appeal to women is uh, believe in yourself first and foremost. 
uh, you have the capacity in whatever way that you are able to uh, support and, and contribute towards this political uh, change that we are working to bring in Zimbabwe. Uh, whether it's helping to get the word out about, you know, UZA or any political party that you believe represents your values, uh, step up. And, and, and I think as women, we need to work together. We need to support each other. Uh, you find in, in Zimbabwe, oftentimes, um, one woman is rising, but others are not <laughs> rising, and, and you know, we don't reach back and help each other. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to support each other, work together. Uh, you know, we have at the very basic level the family. We keep our families together. Let's keep our family as women together as well. Many of you are afraid um, of the consequences of, vi of, of politics, maybe afraid of violence or mm -hmm. afraid of what people might think. Or perhaps even culturally, a lot of people uh, think that, you know, it's not my place yeah. to lead. Um, we are trying to change that because we believe that without women's voices at the table, our rights, our interests will not be represented in the government. We are occupying a very small space. Uh, within our government right now and the only way that we can occupy a bigger space and make sure we are well represented mm -hmm. is by stepping up and being part of the process. Uh, I'm here to serve as, a, as a, an example of what's possible. Uh, I know with great confidence that if the women of Zimbabwe turn up to vote, mm -hmm. we will have a woman president in this com current upcoming government mm -hmm. because they have the power to choose uh, the next president of this country. We're the majority. Mm -hmm. So it's that simple. If all of us do our part and step up and vote, there's nothing that can stop us from changing Zimbabwe. <laughs> and uh, as you live, Elizabeth, why should the people that are watching you right now and others vote for you? Mm. I think ultimately I'm not the only candidate on this ballot. Vote for UZA. Vote for all of us who are part of UZA. We are a political party which is coming with a very different narrative. We want to ensure that for the first time as Zimbabweans, we can uh, establish a nation that is uh, able to complete, compete in the global arena. We are a rich country. Don't look at Zimbabwe with sympathy or pity. And don't think of us as an impoverished nation. We're a rich nation. Most countries have grown wealth or they've adopted wealth from our, our resources. And we need to change that. So as Zimbabweans, I'm saying, entrust me to ensure that we take back Zimbabwe for Zimbabweans. We want to make sure that the Zimbabwean citizens are the ones to benefit from our country. We want to make sure that at the end of the day, Zimbabwe can hold its head up and be proud. I'm tired of traveling to places and being told, oh, you are from Zimbabwe, shame. <laughs> Vote for yeah. me as your president. And I will ensure that Zimbabweans are able to come back from all these countries where we are being mistreated, where they don't want us and will be part of this country, rebuilding this country. I think it will take all of us working together to be able to ensure that our candidates are successful. Um, I'm ready to lead the government of Zimbabwe. <laughs> Elizabeth, thank you very much for <laughs> accepting our invite to come and share your journey with the electronics. Thank you so much. It's been so wonderful. Thank you for having me. Yeah, welcome. There you heard it. She has said it. She is ready to lead Zimbabwe. Are you ready to give uh, the mandate? Come September 2023, we'll be having a different story. This is not the last time that she is here in the studio to share with us about her political life and the political outfit that she leads. Many more programs like this will come. And as you've heard from her, the manifesto is going to be launched any day from today. Mm. If they invite us, you hear from us. If they don't, you hear from them. My name is Robert Money for now. Bye-bye.